Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about lithium toxicity and I'll be covering symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. Lithium toxicity will be mostly pronounced in the phase of dehydration and renal impairment. Other features include nausea vomiting, and diarrhea. And later on, there could be ataxia, sluggishness, agitation, and increased excitability. Severe state of lithium toxicity could include seizures, encephalopathy, Status epilepticus, but it will be non convulsive mostly due to dehydration and renal impairment. The history should include the onset, whether it is acute or chronic, and the cause, whether it is repeated or this is the first occurrence. The duration could also be determined when we know the exact time that the medication was administered. And the history should rule out whether this is a suicidal attempt or not. The form of lithium ingested should be known whether it is immediate release or sustained release. Because this will guide our treatment because it could predict how long we might be treating this patient for. When we are dealing with dehydration, we have to rule out hypovolemia, and that will include history surrounding bleeding, excessive sweating, the use of diuretics, vomiting, and diarrhea. We should also find out the effect of the apovolemic state in the individual, like fever, anorexia, weakness, tiredness, or confusion. The physical examination will warrant general physical examination, checking out for the alertness, the consciousness, and the gait whether there's ataxia. And of course, tremors, myoclonus, and features of dehydration like dry leaves and sunken eyes, hypotension, and tachycardia. To make a crude diagnosis, we have to get to the lab. I know the serum lithium level, and normal range will be between 0.8 milliculum per liter to 1.2 milliculum per liter or millimoles per liter. Actually, some literature will pull it at 0.6 milliculum per liter. To 1.2 milliculum per liter as the safe range. Toxicity will begin at anything greater than 1.2 millimoles per liter, particularly once we have reached anything greater than 1.5 milliculum per liter, then we know we are in trouble. And when it is greater than 2.0 millimoles per liter, then there is more problem. We will check the blood glucose level to know whether we're dealing with hypo or hyperglycemia. We have to acid the electrolytes, particularly sodium, potassium, chlorine, and calcium. Bicarbonate, creatinine, complete blood count, hemoglobin, platelets, white blood cell count with urinine, microscopic culture and sensitivity in elderly, thyroid function test, because we know that lithium affects the thyroid gland. And of course, blood urea nitrogen. Special tests could involve hemochronic gonadotrophin in women of childbearing age. Toxicology screening for acetaminophen or aspirin could be concomitant medication ingested in suicidal attempt and have EKG to know what is happening to the electrical system in the heart, and of course, vitamin B12 acid. 
When it comes to treatment, the treatment will begin with a check on the airway. At the nostrils, the mouth, the ear, all patent. Any foreign body should be removed, sanctioning of any mucus or any bleeding through the orifices, which are them. Of course, the breathing, what is also sad, or is the respiratory rate, any adventitious sound on auscultation, whether percussion donors or not, any obvious deformity in the chest region, any central or peripheral cyanosis. And is the abdomen moving with respiration? And of course, we move to the circulatory system. We want to know what the BP is saying right now. What is the heart rate? And of course, we we'll hook up at the cardiac monitor to get vital signs and the heart rhythm. We we'll get two IV lines and we we'll give IV fluid generously. And of course, we are fully catched out to do the fluid in and out. We have to be careful with pulmonary edema and cerebral edema anyway. And of course, the cardiac monitoring should be on. Still on treatment, every four to six hours, we need to know the level of sodium. Again, I repeat, sodium. And the analysis could be done repeatedly. Someone is asking why focusing so much on renal system. Lithium could give nephrogenin, diabetes, insipidus. And while focusing on thyroid system, yeah, thyroid gland is essential because of the effect of lithium on thyroid hormones. If injection is within two to three hours and patient is still awake, we can give PEG, that is polyethylene glycol. Can give as I 500 mils to 2 liters per hour through nitro gastric tube. Hemodialysis will be required if lithium is greater than 4 millimoles per liter with or without symptoms. If there are severe signs and symptoms in lithium level greater than 2.5 millimoles per liter, please have hemodialysis done. In case of lithium toxicity with seizures, let's have hemodialysis. In individuals with depressed mental status, let's have hemodialysis done as well. And it's compulsory to have hemodialysis done in renal insufficiency. In heart failure, we have to get hemodialysis done. Increase by carbonate, we were around the modalysis and of course raise blood, rare nitrogen and creatinine. That is pointed to renal insufficiency, right? And severe hyperlemia with severe hypercalcemia. We should have hemodialysis down. So consult will be sent to psychiatrist, to toxicologist, and of course the family physician who will be handling the case when the individual is discharged. And with that, I've come to the end of this very brief presentation. Lithium has been around for a long period of time and pretty good in mood stabilization, but the toxicity could be deadly. Remember to subscribe, remember to share. I appreciate it.